Hello, pattern readers. You know how we've been in a Wheel of Time TV show news drought for a while now? Well, we just got a downpour. I am so excited to talk about as much of this news as I can with you, but there's so much that I'm going to have to do a separate video to talk about some of it. The Wheel of Time had a panel for San Diego Comic-Con, and as part of that, they released a bunch of new content. And then we got an impromptu Twitter Q&A from showrunner Rafe Judkins. That's the part that's going to have to wait for a separate video. The most exciting news was at the end of the panel where Rafe Judkins confirmed that the Wheel of Time has been renewed for season three. So I could not be happier about this. This was like my long shot hope for the news that we might get out of this Comic-Con panel, and we actually got it. The wonderful thing about this is that in the same way that season two was picked up before season one ever aired, they're doing the same thing again here. So season two is still a ways away, but they're renewing it for season three anyway, just on the strength of how season one did and presumably what they have seen of season two so far. So again, showing the confidence in the show and most importantly, allowing the show to continue to keep working so that the gap between seasons isn't longer than it has to be. So this is wonderful news. But the first thing that the show released as part of this panel appearance was a little sneak peek at some new Wheel of Time Origins videos that are coming out in August. Now, if you didn't catch these for season one, they were these animated short videos that go into some background history and information that the show itself isn't able to fill in, but it kind of enhances your viewing experience. So, for example, one of the ones that we did get to see in season one was all about the fall of Manetherin and that history, which was referenced in the show, but you get in much more detail in this animated short. The one they gave us a sneak peek of has to do with the fall of Malkir. Again, something that was referenced in season one, but we didn't really get a whole lot of details on. So we're going to get to watch that very soon. And there'll be at least one more, I believe, that's coming out. I'm not really sure how many we're going to be getting in August, but I would say at least two, including the one on the fall of Malkir. The other big thing that the show actually released for us to take a look at is a behind the scenes sizzle reel for season two. Essentially, this is kind of like as good as a teaser or a trailer. There's a lot of shots in here. The only difference really is that a lot of the shots show the camera people and other crew and so on. And some of them are just clearly shots that are, you don't see the characters' faces, so they're being a little bit more circumspect about what we can see and what we can figure out in these scenes. but. I mean, that all that does is encourage Wheel of Time fans to dig deeper and try to figure out what's going on. Now, for most of the rest of this video, I'm going to be breaking down what is in this behind the scenes sizzle reel. And for this part, because I'm going to be speculating about what these scenes mean, I am going to get into some book spoilers. So expect book spoilers through book three the Dragon Reborn, because we have gotten confirmation that season two will cover parts of books one, two, and three. So if you haven't read through The Dragon Reborn, there are going to be some spoilers in the rest of this video that you may wish to avoid. That said, you can definitely still watch these videos. I'm going to put links to them. So check those out. And I'm going to be kind of walking us through some still shots and frames from the behind the scenes video to try to figure out what we're looking at in these scenes and what it means for season two. First up, we get a shot of three Aiel Maidens of the Spear. One of them is clearly Ayula Smart, who is playing Avienda. The other two, we can't see their faces and their hair is covered. So we can only speculate about who those might be. We obviously don't know the actresses. We can certainly guess slash hope that maybe these two maidens are Bane and Chiad. We see a long shot of Moraine and Lan walking on a beach. So that's pretty interesting and may give us some clues as to where Lan and Moraine go on their journey in season two. Rafe had a lot to say about that in his Q&A, but again, saving that for another video. We know a big location in season two is Falma, which is a coastal town slash city, and presumably they will end up there at some point. 
doesn't have to be that this is Fama, but it could certainly be. Here we have a shot of a group of white cloaks on horseback racing across an open plain. We have a wide shot on an open plain that features mostly crew and the figures are really far in the distance. It's hard to make out much here. I only am really commenting on this because it seems like there's a camel in this scene. So that is interesting. We know that they filmed in Morocco, so that would kind of make sense. So it'll be interesting to see where that's going to work its way into the show, since that's not something that's really referenced in the books. This is something that they keep showing us, this big, gigantic wheel with some kind of restraints on, tied onto it. As you can see, the wheel has the appropriate number of spokes, but we really don't know what this is for, what this is emblematic of and where it might be used. But it's definitely something important because they've shown it to us a couple of times now in two different behind the scenes videos. We have some new white cloaks. There's a lot of new things going on, some new things in regards to the costuming. And certainly we have a new actor in a role we haven't seen in season one. In this particular character here, we don't even really see much of his face because he happens to be covering it. And he looks like he has an ax strapped on his back very light colored blonde hair. So it'll be really interesting to see who this character turns out to be. We have a shot from behind of a group of Shinar and soldiers, and it looks like Perrin is with this group. This is pretty fitting with a theory that I've had, and I know other people have had, that Perrin and the Shinarans will be together in a good portion of this season as they go after the Horn of Valir, which was stolen at the end of season one. So here is a pretty intriguing detail. If this is indeed Perrin, it appears that he is wearing a sword, something that he never does in the book series. Now, it would make sense for him to be armed if he is going to go with the Shinaran soldiers and try to recover the Horn of Valir from dark friends, including Pot and Fane. Then you might ask, why isn't he just wearing an axe? Well, it occurs to me that this axe on the back of the white cloak that we see here could be how Perrin ends up getting his axe. We see another way gate, and this one happens to be in a very jungle-like location. So that is certainly intriguing. Where will this be? Who will be using this particular way gate? It's also worth noting that we are also aware of another way gate in a different location that has been spotted. This one looks to be on that same beach location where we've seen Moraine and Lan. But also noteworthy, according to Watseries.com, that actors believed to be playing Perrin and Avienda were also spotted in this area. I wouldn't be surprised if we see multiple uses of way gates in this season and perhaps they will replace the use of portal stones that we see particularly in book two. It wouldn't surprise me if the show decides to not introduce the more complicated explanation of what portal stones are. It would mean that we are missing out on one really iconic scene that a lot of people think of in book two, where Rand sees all his different flicker lives. And it could be that maybe they will incorporate something like that in a different way, or maybe not. I mean, it's an, a really wonderful scene in the book, and I'd love to see it, but I wouldn't be surprised if all of that is just more complicated than they want to get into for the show. We've got an overhead crane shot of some kind of fortress based on some other context clues we have. My guess would be this is part of the city of Falma, which is perhaps a little bit reimagined for the season. As this shot moves inside the battlements, we can see a group of soldiers in here and we also see some banners and tents that are blue with a sigil of a white bird in flight, or at least it looks white in the shot as I can see it in a distance. My guess based on what I can tell of the armor here and the sigil is that we're probably looking at Shan Chan. The sigil for the Shan Chan is a hawk. It's supposed to be a golden hawk in the books, but again, it's hard to make out the details here. That seems a likely option for what we're looking at here. I suppose there are other possibilities and certainly if you have other ideas would love to hear those in the comments. Next we have a shot of what looks like a village where there's an explosion. You really can't make out who any of these particular figures are in this shot. There are some other shots in this little teaser where we see some explosions in a village type set and there we can make out who the characters are a little bit better. But in this shot, it's pretty hard to tell. This next shot, for instance, might be related to that. Again, you can see, yes, 
there's Rand and he's holding a torch. There's a lot of yellow light. Perhaps there's more fires and explosions. It's really can't say for sure whether this is part of that same scene. But we definitely make out Rand here and there are two figures that are behind him. Pretty hard to tell who they might be. One of them over his shoulder looks most like Lan to me. So it would be really interesting if this does work out to be Lan and Moraine with Rand. And that could be an indication that these characters do reunite at some point in the season, maybe before the end. I want to put this together with some more information that we've gotten from Geeky Airy and WattSeries.com. Because I believe these shots where we see some sort of fires or explosions are taking place in a known filming location, a set that was built in the Barandov Studios backlot, which according to Geeky Airy is a pretty extensive set, and it involves several different areas. Here we can see part of what are some more sort of ramshackle areas, and in the distance we can see part of a wall with some turrets. We're going to look at a close-up of that. In the close-up shot, you can actually see through the gate. So you can see part of the set is on the other side. And that area seems to be a little bit more neatly built, less haphazard. And this is a better shot of what it looks like inside the gate. And what does this suggest? To me, it looks exactly like the description of the city of Kyrian. You have the four gate outside the city walls, which is the poorer area. And then you have city wall and inside the walls are more prosperous, well-planned city. So my theory is that these shots indicate we will see Kyrian in the show and that there will be either riots that lead to fires and or an explosion at the Illuminator chapter house. And I like to think that means that Rand is going to be there. That would make the most sense. But perhaps Moraine and Lan would be there as well. Really exciting. Another shot of Lan and Moraine on this beach. So interesting they keep showing that to us, although it is just perhaps a really pretty shot and maybe that's why they're showing it to us multiple times. This next one was a pretty hard to make out shot but if you look at it pretty closely I am pretty sure this is Kai Alexander who plays Min in this scene. One possibility of course is that she does get captured by the Shan Chan as she does in book two and perhaps this is related to that. That's kind of the thing that most clearly comes to mind for me. Here's a lightened up version of the shot thanks to the innkeeper at the dusty wheel. And yeah, that is Min. And also worth noting that her hairstyle seems to have changed and a side of her head has been shaved. We can't see the other side. That may or may not be shaved as well. And it could be that Min is just taking on a different style. But it also makes me think about the way the Shan Chan sometimes wear their hair. She is in an odd location here, someplace dark. And maybe the Shan Chan give her this hairstyle after they capture her if they realize what her abilities are. Maybe it's a loony theory, but it's fun. We get a shot from behind Rand as he is walking through what looks to me like that same set from the back lot of Barandov, which could mean that this is the foregate of Kyrian. And most noteworthy, his head has been shaved and his hair is very short. So we have seen pictures of Yosha Stradowski looking like this before. And there was some speculation as to whether that's what Rand's hair would look like in season two or would the actor maybe be wearing a wig? Well, I think we have our answer now. Rand cuts his hair very short. And so that is an interesting choice that they've made here. And I can think of a couple possible reasons for that. One possibility is if he's getting a lot of attention for his red hair and his possible connection to being an Aiel, or just the oddity of red hair in general, well, that's one way to perhaps attract less notice is to cut off his hair. Another possibility is that he's already dealing with some mental health issues in this season and they could tie that decision into that somehow, but that's a bit more speculative. Another behind the headshot of a character walking away from the camera. This person's hair is long and I would say most likely gray, although it is possible that this person is just very light blonde hair. It looks more grayish in tone to me. You can't really say definitively whether this is a man or a woman. I think the shoulders make this person look a bit more masculine. And they're walking in a really pretty location, sort of like a garden with some stone walls. Their outfit looks fairly plain, nothing too fancy. But really, 
it's very hard to speculate about who this character might be. But I do feel like they're really teasing us with this figure, giving us someone who is pretty hard to place. Maybe it's something a little bit more out there, you know? We've gotten teases about seeing perhaps multiple Forsaken in this season. I don't particularly connect this description to any Forsaken, but who knows? These characters can be in disguise. I'd like to point out that Rafe decided to respond to a tweet about this by saying, no one has gotten it yet. And he used this little emoji, which is hard to see here, but it is actually a moon face emoji. So maybe another little clue there. Super interesting, but it rules out a lot of things that have been discussed in the fandom. We get a third shot of a figure from behind walking away from the camera. This one I'm pretty sure is Pot on Fane. And then a dark cloaked and hooded figure. This one, you know, walking more at a distance and from the side. We still can't make out who or what this is. Definitely suggestive of perhaps a fade. We get an aerial view of what looks to be a set. And it looks like what they've created is a sort of domed pavilion. This is clearly just like a set that's showing part of something. It wouldn't be a full set here. It is a little bit, again, hard to figure out what's going on here. The color here suggests to me maybe Shan Chan again. There look to be five figures that I can make out in this particular shot. And the only thing I can say really is that there seems to be some diversity within this group as far as the way these people are dressed gender and so on. So there is one figure who is wearing a red outfit that looks similar to a shot we get later. Next shot is in some kind of a walled city or fortress perhaps and we can make out white cloaks fighting with some other group and this group has some armor on and some red clothing. This seems like we might be in Falma in this particular shot. We have a really gorgeous shot of Egwene standing in the White Tower, and she does appear to be wearing white. Not at all surprising for what we know of Egwene's journey in books two and three. And what's this I see? Egwene's hair is unbraided. So that's definitely a significant change that we're going to see for her, and we're going to see that in season two. This next shot also takes place somewhere in the White Tower. Looks to be training grounds, and we see three apparently male figures from behind, hard to make out who these people might be, but they look to be fighting or training with quarter staffs. So that makes me hope that one of them, maybe this one on the right, is none other than Matt Cawthon, which could possibly make these other two figures Gowan and Galad. One can only hope. This next shot is another image of what appears to be that same sort of explosion in a village type set. This next shot is one of my favorites because it looks to be none other than Avienda fighting a white cloak. But this shot would seem to line up with what I talked about in a previous video, an audition script that we believe is for Avienda for season two. And she's in a scene with Perrin. And the scene suggests that perhaps Perrin saves Avienda from capture by white cloaks or injury by white cloaks and so on in a similar fashion to the way he saved Gaul in book three. And so I'm guessing that that is part of that scene that she obviously has this fight with white cloaks and something comes out of that where she needs some help and Perrin is one to help her and that is how those two characters end up connected. Another favorite shot right here. Fans who have read book two will instantly recognize this. It is a fade and it has been nailed to a door. Definitely a memorable image from book two. And the people who appear to be looking at this include Shinar and Soldiers again. And I would say that this figure who we've seen before with reddish colored sleeves is probably Perrin. And then who do we have over here on the left with this long hair in what appears to be sort of dreadlock type fashion? I would guess that this is none other than Elias, who we know has been cast in the show. And I've talked about that before. He'll be played by an actor called Gary Beadle. And it doesn't completely confirm the theory that he might be taking over Kieran's role in the book and the Shinarans will be using a wolf brother to track the dark friends instead of a sniffer. 
but I still think that is the most likely theory, and this certainly supports that, to see Elias with the Shinarans and Perrin here in, in part of the story that would fit in with them tracking the horn. Next, we get a pretty intriguing shot of Rand by himself, and in this case, he is seated and looking towards the camera, and he's got his hand over his face like he's thinking. It's a pretty intense look that he has here and would suggest again that maybe we're getting into some exploration of Rand's mental state, kind of like what we would get in book three, although perhaps we're getting a little bit more insight into Rand, whereas that book leaves it more mysterious. He looks maybe a little bit bloodied, very open to interpretation here, but I just like the mood that this scene evokes. For all the Daniel Henny fans out there, we get a little shot of shirtless Lan practicing with his sword. And the only thing that would make this shot better is if Rand was in it, because I would really love to see Lan doing some training of Rand with the sword in this season. Not quite sure how that would all work out, but again, if we get the intriguing possibility that Rand does somehow meet back up with Lan and Moraine before the end of the season, then maybe that's a possibility. But again, that's not in this teaser. That's just me saying what I want to see happen in season two. There is a shot of a woman riding on horseback through a dark woods at night, and there's not much else to say about that. Maybe it's Moraine, but what doesn't have to be with the amount of information we have here. A shot of Pot and Fane looking menacing. Duh. It seems like they're featuring him kind of prominently in this particular teaser. And so that is interesting. I wonder how much Pot and Fane we're going to be getting in this season. I would say almost certainly more than we got in season one. Then we have a close up on a map, which is being used for battle tactics, apparently. There are little figurines for at least two factions on this. There are white figurines that are probably white cloak encampments, and there are two different shaped red figurines. There are circles, and then there are what appears to be ships on the water. Now it's possible that the circles and the ships are two different factions, but because of the same color, it could be that those are all Shan Chan. The location is probably somewhere near Falma, though we can't say that for sure. There are some shots of what appears to be some sort of battle fight conflict at night. It's a bit foggy looking. The figures are really hard to make out. There are also figures down on the ground, so looking more like part of a battle scene where people are dying. Another intriguing shot that is perhaps part of this same larger scene, in this case there's a figure in the distance that again looks very large, dragging two other figures. The large figure makes me wonder if this could be an Ogier. We do know that there are Ogier who are a part of the Shan Chan army. The size and shape of this particular figure I definitely don't think is Trolloc or other shadow spawn. They appear to be holding on to two figures, one of whom looks to be dressed in white, so maybe a white cloak. And then closer to the camera, lying on the ground, is a figure that looks like Marks Rutherford to me, so I'm pretty sure that is Perrin. Here is one of the more intriguing shots of the entire teaser. A woman wearing a very strange kind of headdress that covers most of her face, leaving really only her chin and mouth perfectly visible. And you can kind of see through the screened part on top, so you can kind of make out her face a little bit. Based on what we can see of her face, she does definitely resemble an actress we believe to be in the cast, Karima McAdams. And the interesting thing is she has been a popular fan choice for the role of Lanfear once we heard about her casting, but if this is her, as it appears it could be, this definitely does not look like Lanfear, unless Lanfear is in disguise uh, of some sort. So I'm not expecting that. I think this is a Shan Chan character, most likely, and it would fit in with some of the descriptions of the way the high blood among the Shan Chan dress at times. So one possibility is that this could be the High Lady Suroth. In another night shot, this is very quick, hard to make out much here, but there is a figure being thrown from horseback. Also on the ground, there's a figure that looks an awful lot like a Fade, and it makes me wonder if we could be finally getting a Lan versus Fade scene in this season. And then the very last shot, one of the most hard to make out in all of this, a figure 
I would say most likely male, dressed mainly in red, swinging some kind of a sword towards the camera. Very quick, very blurry shot, really hard to make out who this character might be, but their costume reminds me of this wide shot that we saw earlier with a sort of pavilion where there's a handful of characters, one of whom is dressed in a red costume that looks very similar to this. So I think it's the same character. Total speculation here, but perhaps the character resembles this actor, Daniel Francis, who we know has been cast as the High Lord Turok. And I think the costuming could fit. What do you think? So this was a super fun video to watch and pull apart. Those are all of my initial thoughts on this teaser coming pretty quickly after having watched it several times. And it may be that after I dig into it some more, I'll have more thoughts or my thoughts might change. So, you know, I will bring you more of that as it comes. And again, my next video I plan to do is a breakdown of Rafe Judkins Q&A that he did right after this release because there's a ton to dig into there. I just could not do it all in one video. So subscribe so you don't miss that. Whenever I am talking about this kind of content where it's clear that there will be changes from book to screen, boy, I have talked about that at length in so many different ways. So if you follow this channel, you know my thoughts changes are necessary. We have to expect them because this is such a different medium. These are two totally different things and we just have to know that going in. But this always brings out people who are very upset by that. So as I always like to say, until next time, gird your loins, my friends.